budget. So the debt that I have is $32,736.79 altogether. Okay. To date, 2020. Correct. This is still right? Income and cash flow expenses? I mean, cash, yeah, cash flow expense income, are those accurate? Income is 3740 Okay. And then cash flow expenses, are those numbers a little bit different or? Correct. Um, I have right now, so you have 30, 31. It's a little bit higher. Um, actually, it's a little lower, actually. Um, it's like 2840 for my expenses. With that, let's see what that cash flow is now. Yeah. 900? Correct. Do you have a line of credit? I didn't see that on I, I have a line of credit and uh, what is it? I have thirty six eighty seven available and the limit on it is fifty five hundred. This is a personal unsecured line of credit? Correct. For fifty five hundred. And uh what's the interest rate? The interest rate is ten percent. And how much did you say you owed? Uh, thirty-six, eighty-seven. So right now you're just doing velocity banking on the line of credit itself. Correct. Okay. And then in now. Go ahead. When we last spoke, um. I had pulled out funds from my 401k to use to start the policy. Okay. We were looking at putting in 40000 a year? Um, that's my goal, yes. Because once I do this, I'm going to put my entire paycheck in the policy. So you got approved for the 40k funding. So they, they allowed for that. Correct. It's a $4,000 premium with the Mecca 40 It'll probably be a little bit higher than 40, but I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I can see new samples um, I got from Phil. Okay, so I, I didn't I didn't make this, correct? Correct. Oh, okay, okay. No wonder why I'm like... Yeah, he was waiting for the medical records and all that stuff to get through, and that finally happened. And so now I'm in limbo with... Oh, oh I do have um, 4,000... Um, in savings. So you got 4K cash on hand. Mm-hmm. How much did you pull from your retirement? I pulled 24000 This is a loan or is this a withdrawal? This is a loan. Okay. So you got 28 total. This is a 1090 split. And this is with Guardian. Correct. I think it's like a... NT preferred or something like that. I don't know. Okay, so you got the you got the higher preferred rating. So, okay, your MEC limit. I just found it. According to the sheet that I'm looking at, I'm not sure what the final contract will say, but according to my illustration I that I have, it's sixty k, sixty thousand seven hundred is the MEC. And are you going with the index or without? I don't believe we've had that conversation. Okay. Most people start without that I've been talking to. So I've honestly haven't played around, messed with the index participation rider feature just yet. It is something that I will... Uh, use later on. It's something that you don't have to, uh, you know, you don't you don't lose it if you say no in the beginning. It's something that you can take away, add, take away, add. So, and it's very flexible. So I'll just put some notes here. So the index writer with the Guardian. There's a two percent flat fee. So whatever goes in. They take 2% and that allows that money to get managed and grow with the uh, 
with the S and P, right? Okay. You can the. Okay, this one is the stock market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, the cap is twelve point five percent on it. Um, the you still get your guarantee floor. So if they go negative, then you would still get your floor. The only I would say the only disadvantage is if it was to go negative one year, then you minus 2% from the four and your, your net, what you would get from whatever, however much percentage you had from cash value going into index, if the stock market went negative, you would still get that 2% floor right? Because they had that initial charge. Um, but then you can earn up to 12.5%, but the net, actual net would be 10.5 in, in reality, because, you know, because they always have that fee. Um, you have the option to have anywhere from zero to a hundred percent of your cash value go into that rider. So you can do, you know, 20%, 10%, zero. You know, if you do zero, then you're just going with the guaranteed four and then that surplus of 1.65% with a guardian for a total of 5.65, 2020 current dividend rate for Guardian. Okay, so okay. that's that's that. Um, so this is an interesting idea here, interesting concept, because technically I don't have the 40K now, but you're, you're basically designing a policy where you most likely won't have to ever have another policy ever again because you're creating so much space up front in terms of MEC and the premium and then the funding amount. According to the design that you sent my way, it looks like this is a, a 10 pay. So you'd be paying 40,000 for basically 10 years. So that's 400K in principle total. So without creating a mech, we can, we can easily dump 40K into the Guardian over the course of 10 years. No issue, no additional medical underwriting, no, nothing delaying us. And then you also left the window open to continue to fund the policy even after the the ten year period, according to what was written here on these designs. Yep. Yeah. So after year ten, or any year for that matter, you're you're only obligated to ever pay the four. Anything above that would be an unscheduled, you know, PUA of uh, cash additions. So. During any of the 10 years and after, I can keep putting in 40K a year. I can put as low as 4,000. Um, if I have a really bad year, I could even borrow from the existing cash value in there to, to pay the premium, which is cool. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't want to do, I wouldn't want it to get that bad. Um, but, you know, that is a kind of like a life support there and that to, to keep the policy active. Um, you left the window open to keep funding, which is cool. And you have a large mech. So that mech is going to, you know, stand the test of time every seven years. You'll be able to basically put 40K in for, for a longer uh, funding period, longer than 10K, according to the designs here. I would just double check with Phil on that. Okay. But um, okay. I'm pretty sure that is how, how it's being currently set up, which is good. Okay. I like it. I like it. I like it.
looks like the number is 28k to start it's not the case correct um i do need to change one thing and that is what the cash flow is um when i first started this i was putting money aside in savings and i stopped doing that so the 900 number that's it's gonna increase yeah so it's increased I've... for the month of february or it's going to start going up for the month of March? It's already stopped. So where are you at now? Right now, um, I'm at almost double, like 1500 I mean, sorry, 1800 because I don't save anymore. Gotcha. That's how I came up um, with the $4,000, so I stopped. So if you're cash flowing 1800 a month, the times that by 12, the most amount of money you can save in a year is twenty one thousand six hundred. Um, with the help of a line of credit, could probably you know increase that a little bit higher. Um, but from what it looks like here, you already know this that this is a this is a policy that you know is a bit big for the current numbers, but. From what you've been discussing and talking with um, Phil and myself, you seem very still comfortable with it, um, you know, which is, it's just fine. I mean, you got approved, so it's not like they're, that's not like you got denied, not like they're saying no. Um, you just know in your head that in the beginning that I'm not exactly getting a a 1090 split in the beginning. We're okay with that because you have a plan to basically 10x to, to bring that income much higher so that we can cash flow and then obviously get that line of credit higher to you know bring in more funds. And you also were saying something very interesting earlier how you plan on pretty much dumping your paychecks each and every month into the policy. Yes. And then borrowing what you need when you need it. Correct. Uh, each month as policy loans to pay your bills. Very interesting strategy there. Well, what kind of happened was... Um lesson really um i was looking to get a down payment for a house but i no longer have the time constraint to do so so worst case if i keep staying where i am um i can bank on this happening for a year maybe two but this doesn't count me um actually working with alex 10 10 xing my income okay and you're working with him correct What's the what's the business that you uh, want to build with that? The business that I'm building is a nonprofit advisory firm where it's teaching nonprofits how to be compliant, so they can run their businesses risk free and worry free. Hmm. A lot of nonprofits put people in place, and it's how I learned, because they were trusted, they you know, were committed to the ministry, but they didn't know the rules and regulations, and so they have improper practices, and then end up paying penalties um, and fines with the IRS. And then you come in, they pay you, like, what, consulting fees or Correct. the one time? Um, I have an assessment that I perform, and I go through various areas of payroll, uh, compensation, donations, guest speakers, 1099s, really get into the foundation, the bylaws of the organization to make sure they start off um, on good ground. I like it. And, and then give them ways on how to... Uh, keep it sustained for those to follow so you really kind of bring that corporate structure into the nonprofit world so i'll give them recommendations on how to set up an accountable reimbursement policy um how to have a credit policy or accounting policy um spe specifically for churches hmm. 
have you been creating any content around that or uh, or have you started any kind of content output with Alex or anything like that um what I did was I created the program and I'm screen screening through the questions now to make it shorter so I can make it automated because I have everything lined up on PDFs and Word documents and so I have content that is in the form of PDF guides. So once I finish the program, cool. I'm going to start developing the YouTube channel so I can get where you are. Um, mm -hmm. I just work full time. <laughs> and I'm also, um, I volunteer my services at uh, my local ministry. So I'm kind of juggling the three. Okay. At the moment. Okay. So coming back to these numbers here. Should you go with this number, we, we can easily afford the 4K. We know that. It's Correct. just that, you know, in the beginning years, the, the cash value up front is not going to be like, you know, compared to if we had something along the lines of um, like a 20, like a 2,500 premium putting in 25k a year you know or 28k a year being the, the whole amount you know so as long as you you get that you're you're fine with that and you're willing to kind of I guess sacrifice that upfront initial maximization on cash for the overall picture of, of I guess locking in that number now and then saying, okay, this is what I can do right now per year, or maybe this is what I can do right now per year. And when I get to that point where I can start max funding the policy, then I'll start, you know, doing like in addition to max funding the policy, once you've built up that income to where you desire, we can do makeup contributions to basically, uh, you know, catch up on all that, those um, years that we missed out. So like the year one, we miss out on 12,000, you know? And then year two, maybe we didn't, we only put in 20, so we have another 20 of space. So it keeps rolling over. We don't lose that mech space, which is good. You can always make up for it later on. So if you're cool with all that, great if you want to maybe dial it back maybe down to the 30 or 25 or you know between 25 and 30 um, then you know obviously that would that would make it perform better up front in the initial years but if you're okay if you're okay with taking that hit knowing okay you know as of right now it's not a 1090 more like more like a 60 40 almost um, in that sense or 70 30 then we're cool and then we can basically pull the trigger on that so all you would have to all you would have to do is tell Phil okay um, for the first year I want to put in 28 um, and then with Guardian they allow you to add more at leisure at any time during the year um, you just always want to make sure on the anniversary date that you have the 4k um, so you'll coordinate that with our chunks. So, you know, instead of um, instead of using the line of credit to chunk at debt, if you st so going back to that question, you know, when do I stop throwing the line of credit at the at the debt and start throwing at the policy? Really, the answer to that question is when someone actually starts funding a policy in those beginning years. We pretty much want to send everything to the policy first, then borrow and start owning the debt inside of the policy where the where the cash value lies so that's what i'm seeing right now any questions on that yeah so i just want to make sure i'm following you so t doing this right with a route with the current setup it's not at the 90 10 split so if i change it to it is technically a 1090 you're saying you want to put in 40 so you have a premium of four. If you don't put in 40, then yes, it's not a 
it wouldn't be a you wouldn't have made it to the 1090 for that year but the policy is set up as 1090 you know Does so that make is sense? it better that when the income is there to support it because i think i was going with it with the hope of it getting there so would you grow the policy as your funds grow or do you leave room so there's i, I think it, it comes down to a personal preference i know me personally I did it based on my growth. I I picked a realistic number that I know I could do and then left the window open maybe first to add some more, you know. Um, then there's the other argument of pretty much not not ever needing to set up another policy, just have one big fat policy your whole life right and have a and have a huge mac and a huge funding period so that you don't have to run into that problem when you when you do essentially you know 10x your income so you kind of like lock it in now and you know you're locking in the you know you're, you're according to life insurance you're the healthiest you're ever going to be right now the older you get, the more expensive it'll get. So it'll it'll change from year to year. Um, but it's like for me personally, and for most people that I've worked with, the way I come up with that funding number and premium number is I take the cash flow times it by twelve, take the line of credit times it by sixty six percent, add that to the overall number, and like and then that would be the the goal number and you know I'm dealing with this with another client right now that you know wants to put in 25,000 his income fluctuates and he you know wants to leave the door open to put a little more money in there in my mind I was like okay you you could essentially spread out the number you know so I guess another way to answer that question is what's the what's the total number that you would like to put away over the course of x amount of years right so i could easily stretch out the 400k instead of over 10 years i could stretch it out over 15 or 20 you know and then that would lower the funding amount lower the premium so it, it's something to think about I don't think there's a wrong answer here. I think it's just more of a, you know, what's the what's the most effective strategy right now for myself and how how committed how committed am I to 10x? So like based on that conviction, that belief of how committed I am to go from 3700 a month to 37000 a month in, say, two, three years, then you have a new problem, you know? Then it's like, well, where do I put this money now, you know? Because you'll, you'll be putting it majority of here, but no matter what, once you 10x, you're going to have that problem of not knowing where to put the excess funds, but you did create a place to store a nice portion of your wealth, you know, about maybe 20, 25% based on, on this number here, if you were to uh, 10X, which is, you know, not bad at all. <clears throat> what are your thoughts so far? So let's say worst case, worst case, I don't 10X. Now you're stuck my... with a 4K policy. Which so is... I have a 4K policy but if i'm taking my paycheck and dumping it into the policy which i guess um it would be around 40 probably more after taxes uh probably close to 60 grand if that's going in there every year how would the policy adjust to that in that worst case scenario let's see 
Let's illustrate that. Because it seems either way, if I 10x or worst case, I kind of feel safe. If you follow me with that. Yeah, like I said, you know, there's. I don't think there's a wrong answer here. I think it's just a kind of a, you know, what what makes me the most comfortable, happy. Um, do I know I can do this? Do I do I really believe I can, you know, hit that number each and every year? I I know for sure I can always put in 4K. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lose my mech space, so that's, you know, good. But let's see, year one, and I'll just be conservative. Let's say I let's say I dump 25k. I, I know it'll be 28. That's what you have right now. But say I dump 25. 4k goes towards premium. So now I'm left with 21,000, and then 21. Let's see the current term on your policy, 40K. Your OIT expense, so one year term. If you were to put in the whole 40,000, your term expense is $532 and a penny. But if we get in a little over half that number, Compared to forty thousand, maybe that number will drop by like a hundred bucks, or maybe let, let's say four hundred. Okay, and then we have the five percent PUA fee on twenty-one thousand. So twenty-one thousand minus four hundred, and then times that number by five percent. We'll get that. And let's say in year one. If I put in 25 and the premium is 4, and I have the term expense and the PUA fee, I think the starting cash, day one, we can say maybe it's somewhere around that number, 19,500. And then with that being said, when we have a policy, they'll allow us to borrow up to 90, 95%. So the actual money I can use day one, $17,550. When you borrowed the money from the retirement, is it already included in those numbers, the expense? Oh, okay, cool. So even with that, I'm still cash flowing 1800 bucks, right? Okay. Because I recently got a raise, so it kind of washed back out. Ah, uh, okay. Cool. So I erased the important numbers on the board. So if you don't mind saying it again. So it's... Okay, so for the expensive... Right, I'm sorry, the debt total right now... Was like 32000 A flat finger. Yeah, 32000 I was actually just pulling up the car. Oh shoot, my spreadsheet. Hold on, let me hit undo. And the income is like thirty. Two seven thirty six seventy nine. Yeah. And where are you? Because I lost the board. income. The income is at um, I have thirty seven forty. And then this, and then the expense was twenty eight forty, right, or twenty seven forty. Expenses, yes. What number? The twenty-seven forty. But remember, I told you I started the savings, and I included it in that number, so that would also go down. To what? Because I gave you the twenty-seven hundred. Gotcha. And so we're right around eighteen hundred again for my living expenses. Yeah. Okay. So now, coming back to the Guardian policy, based on 4K premium, OIT expense, say 400, 5% PUA fee, 19,500 to start out with. I have 17,550 to actually uh, work with. 
you get paid bi-weekly? Correct. I get paid bi-weekly, and my debt is of um, a car and two credit cards and a 401k loan, if you want to count that. Uh-huh. That is not included in that um, debt number, just FYI. So what is the current debt on the vehicle now? So right now on the car, it's 20600 I'm sorry, $20,792.93. Yeah, and then the credit card, you said? Yeah, the credit card? I have one with $463 on it. That's irrelevant. Any bigger ones? Um, I just have one that's like $7,800. $7,800? Yes. Is it on 0% or anything like that? It is not. What's the monthly payment? The monthly payment I pay on that, it's really low. Um, what happens is I pay so much on it when I chunk, it pushes it out. So I put um, about three grand on it at a time when I'm chunking. Okay. But the actual minimum payment is like a hundred and twenty-five dollars, if that. And the car payment is uh, six eighty-nine ninety-six. Uh, no, it's three sixty-three a month. Three sixty-three. So this is where I'm saying I don't know when do I do I stop using the line of credit? Should I increase the line of credit? Um, what's the best strategy so I can use the loan? I mean, sorry, use the policy in the equation. So one idea that's coming to mind is every time I receive a paycheck to basically. Let's see, my expenses are, are nineteen forty a month. Times twelve I spend twenty-three thousand two eighty a month. So it's like is there a possibility I could essentially Add eighteen seventy to the principal, meaning the the PUA of the policy, each and every time. See if that could work, and then I take out a policy loan once a month for nineteen forty from the available cash value that I can that I have access to so it's like at the beginning of every month before a month begins I'll already have this in my hand to and that'll go into my checking account which will pay bills essentially I'm ignoring my debt for the sake of trying to max fund this policy. See if that makes sense. Let's see. So 1750, I borrow 1940, doesn't matter what I borrow cuz I'm going to be earning interest while paying interest, so that that's an automatic wash. This money pays the bills. 1870 comes in. I can basically wait to get both paychecks for a total of 3740 and then essentially add 3740 to the 17550 without paying back the 1940. Right, so I leave that outstanding and I add 13740 to the PUA. So 3740 every time I add money into PUA, there's a fee. 3740 minus 187, 3553. This will be very interesting if this works. 3553 plus 17,550. So now I'm at 21,103. 
cash value with an outstanding loan of 1940 at at 6%. Right? Um, the loan interest I it's going to be earning 6% on 1940. I think currently uh, when I look at my guardian it says 5.66 is the loan interest rate right now with them. So it should apply to you as well. So 21,103 following month I do it again. Take out another 1940. And then another 3740 gets added. I'm basically living out of the policy, but I'm completely ignoring my debt. And I'm, I'm wondering if that makes sense or the other strategy would be to borrow 66% of this up front to you know, try to wipe out the, the debt that I do have and start owning that debt in the policy and then bringing this into the equation, the line of credit, to help me pay back the policy and then, just, and then do velocity banking from the line of credit with the uh, income and expenses. So I think I might be on to something here. It's just like trying to make sense of it but do you see where I'm going with it basically what's happening is once a month every month I take out one thousand nine hundred and forty dollars but what's happening over the course of 12 months is I'm putting in three thousand seven hundred and forty dollars which is forty four thousand eight hundred and eighty dollars I'm ignoring the debt on purpose for the sake of trying to max fund the policy with all of my income and expenses at the end of 12 months I should be in debt on the policy via my expenses of 1940 times 12 so 23,000 280 the debts I'm, I'm you know I'm paying the monthly payments on the debts those that's it is what it is um, maybe I use some of this money to try and build the business right that's another thought All right. so some people would love this strategy because they're like okay we're ignoring the debt for the sake of trying to max fund and 10x and then just come back and wipe it out in like a one shot one kill i mean once i 10x there's no i don't have any problems anymore once once i add a zero right move the comma over the problems are over problems are over <laughs> you know then, then then this is nothing right so, so but in the meantime i feel i feel like this could work because I wouldn't run out of cash. That's the only that's the only thing that was crossing my mind is do I run out of cash value? I don't because I started out with capital 25 28k. I got this 17550 to work with. Each and every month I'm adding $3,740 to the the overall cash, right? Technically, there's, there's more than what I have available to use. So even though 1940, 1940 is coming out, 1940 is coming out each and every month, right? I'm getting, I'm earning 6%, 6% on what I take out. I'm paying 5.66 back. Doesn't matter. This will wash it. This will, this will wash the cost of it. And then I'm actually getting very, very close to the original intent of being able to fund it up to 40,000. I make more than 40,000 a year. My take home is 44,880 according to the 3740. Cash flow 1800. My cash flow per month is relatively close to my expenses per year, right? Pretty close to each other. So over 12 months, I'll have this outstanding 23,280, 23,280 times 5.66%. So 
in a year, you'll pay $1,317.64 in interest, I think. That'll be right around the number. So 23,000. So it'll be 24,597.64 year over, over a 12 month period. This is how much I'll owe in the policy that I don't pay back, but I would have hit the max on the policy. That once I hit 40K in terms of principal going in there, principal going in there, the other 4,880 would go towards replenishing the loan, right? Or probably not because it'll just, it'll, it'll, once I hit year 12, I mean month 12, it restarts the funding period to put in another 40K. So I probably won't, I probably won't have that problem more than likely. <clears throat> If I take my entire paycheck and put it in the policy, I'll pull the 1940, I think it was somewhere. Yeah, so you would you would need to borrow $1,940 or whatever you know for sure are your bills, expenses. You you I mean, you can pull out a little more than what you think. So you you borrow that money for the following month that you're you're gonna go into. So it's in advance. This, so it's in advance, it's there. It's in the checking account, it's there. You're, you've already deemed it, okay, this money is being used for March, okay? And then when I receive my paychecks in March, those two paychecks, when I get both of them, I combine them together and uh, add it into Guardian, right? Throw it into Guardian. And then before that month is over, I'm already taking out another policy loan for $1,940 and then waiting for my next paycheck, doing it again. Okay, when you say um, I'm not paying attention to the car and credit card, is that in the $1,940 or no? The $1,940, say the question again. Um. We were talking about letting go the car and the credit card. We were ignoring that. I'm ignoring trying to pay it off. Okay. I'm so paying the it, bill. Gotcha. Can't ignore that. We've got to pay the bill. Okay. Right. The 1940 okay. is part of the bill. Gotcha. Right. Okay. So saying put all the money in the policy to max fund that, so I hit closer to the mecca 40k. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay. So as far as going into the velocity banking piece, when would I start that? I almost don't see the purpose of borrowing money at 10% uh, at this correct. point. I, yeah. I'm not convinced that velocity banking is going to help me here if I'm doing this strategy where I'm putting in pure cash each and every month. As soon as I borrow from there, and now I got to figure out how to dump all my money in there and then take it out, and I, I, I might get myself confused. Okay, so I need Once you've to... made the transition from velocity to infinite, you're now making velocity irrelevant, right? Because now this is your uh -oh. debt. This is your debt tool now. This is your debt tool. Okay. So. Seeing that I get paid in March, um, do I go ahead and bring, I don't do anything with the line of credit because I'm putting everything in the policy. Mm -hmm. Well, now, I, could, I, 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 I would like to zero this out, you know, because I can zero that out quickly, right? Oh, 3687. Okay. So I think I want to do velocity banking, zero that out, fresh, clean, right? Just have these debts left. If I want to do this right here, right, where you're dumping your paychecks into your policy and you're borrowing one time a month, that's going to cover all your bills in that month. And then your paychecks 
is adding to the principal cash value. It's not paying back the loan. So you're gonna so when you log into Guardian, you'll have the option. It'll say pay off loan or add to PUA. And so each time you'll be adding to PUA. Okay. You'll be ignoring, you'll be ignoring the policy loan on here, trying to max fund the policy here. And you also leave space open to potentially borrow from to try and grow your business. And if and if you're really committed to 10xing, it's gonna solve all the problems really fast to where you pay this off, right? So so this right here I think is the most riskiest strategy right here. I think this is the most risky, it's high risk. And I and I think some people watching be like, well, why? Well, I don't think we're accounting for a mistake, an emergency. Um, you know, once I have all my money in there, you know, it, it does take me a few days to, to get my money out of there. And I don't know if I want to be pulling from my credit lines to take care of an emergency you know, unless the emergency does allow a credit card, then, you know, it's fine. But um, on, the, on, the other, on the other hand, it's not risky at all. So it's like it's risky, but it's not risky at all. It's just scary because it's new and it's different. And I don't think anyone's tried this before. I mean, I, I didn't even try it myself, so. <laughs> gotcha. I understand, but it logically makes sense to it, me. It does. Um... That's where I feel comfortable. But what I also have is probably another $5,000 in a separate 401k that I can pull from. Um, because of my job, when I move into a salary role, I have to restart over with my 401k. So I do have another ace in the hole, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. um, and it's probably about time I look either to either increase that line of credit or get another one because I haven't touched my credit score since I started this. The very first time we talked, um, when you, I don't know if you recall, told me to consolidate the credit card and the line of credit to get the 5,500. Okay. So if I do that and then if I, um, responsibly just get a zero percent for emergencies thankfully i don't have kids or anything like that that i'm responsible for it's just me so i can understand taking the risk here especially if i'm committed to my vision and the work that i'm putting into it um so with all of this in mind the initial question that was raised about if the policy size is correct do you still feel that way with this strategy I mean, it's more than enough, in my opinion. Because my three main priorities were to educate myself, grow my business, and then at some point, I would get uh, a down payment on a home. I don't know where that's going to come from. Well, it, I mean... Not all in that order. The oh, okay, okay, okay. Down. <laughs> the home would be further down, but right gotcha, now the gotcha. focus is education and the business. And as I start to 10x, um, I'm sure my living arrangements will change. Yeah. Gotcha. So, you know, if you if you want to go with that 40k, you know, it's it's a high number. Um, if you wanted to dial back. I think I would go as low as 30. But if you wanted to keep it, I would not go any higher than 40. I would say that. I would not go any higher than 40. Okay, so. And then you also need to know, and we're, we're in alignment with ignoring the debt, just, just paying the bill, right? And then sending all my income into this policy 
once a month, I borrow my expenses. I need to know that number to the T. I could add a little buffer, maybe a hundred bucks or so. Might be very, very disciplined with that each and every month. I make sure I borrow, I take out a policy loan days in advance before each month starts. Once a month, I add both paychecks together, send it off to Guardian as a unscheduled PUA payment to the policy. And I would like to definitely talk to Phil about that. And, and I, I would even show Phil this video, honestly. Be like, hey. Will he be able to see it? Can, can you, because it's an unlisted video. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just, you, you can, can, you can share the link because you have it. Oh, okay. And just okay. tell them, you know, fast forward to where it, where we start talking. But, okay. you know, I, I got to edit it first. But, you know, he can see the raw material. And so we want to ask, you know, just, just, so we're, just so we know, I believe there's no issue with this. Because Guardian allows you to add money at leisure without any medical or, or underwriting. You know, so we won't, ha we won't hit a roadblock, so to speak because they are more flexible. But I just want to get it reiterated that, hey, um, I want to pay between 25 and 28,000 to start off as a, as a lump sum payment to Guardian. And then every month thereafter, I want to make a payment myself, unscheduled. I don't want it planned because I might not hit that number each and every time. So I just want to make sure I do it on my time. I want to add 3740 a month each month as a unscheduled PUA payment. Any issue with that? Yes or no? No. I'm pretty sure it'll be a no, but you know, just want to hear it again. And then in terms of borrowing, you say, hey, I want to borrow about two grand each and every month to uh, live off of for my bills. I'm not doing velocity banking or debt snowball to pay off debt I'm just simply focusing on max funding the policy creating as much cash value leverage in there in the beginning years the only thing that I would take out any additional money any additional money for would be to 10x grow the business correct and if I can do that 10x in about a year or two years at most, go from making three thousand seven forty to thirty-seven thousand four hundred. Game over. My cash flow is gonna. I mean, my cash flow is gonna quadruple or more. And then game over here. This, you know, you'll just be max funding the policy each and every month. You'll probably get a much larger line of credit. That'll get wiped out with pure cash. You know, once you have capital, it does not make sense to try to borrow. You know, unless you have a super large line of credit, then yes, you know, but when you have more cash than you can handle on the, in terms of, uh, if you have more, way more capital than line of credit, it wouldn't make sense to borrow from there. It would just make sense to try and get as much into the policy and then borrow out of it to, you know, wipe out, shift these debts into here. Right. So essentially what we're doing is we're making velocity banking irrelevant. And, and it's just, now it's just all infinite banking at this point. So pretty cool. This works. Wow. This will be really, really a cool story to tell. Wow. Yeah. Any questions? I'm, I'm just assessing and looking at everything. Um, yeah, I, I see the quote unquote risk side of it. So the numbers have to be accurate. Um, my behavior definitely has to be disciplined, which is going <laughs> to yeah. pop. I just see there's a lot of motivation to really 10x and do the vision that I have. Mm -hmm. And as long as I do that, there shouldn't be any problems. I do have some other safety nets um, out there if I need it. And shucks, worst case, I could probably reach out to family, but I don't see that being an issue. Okay. I like this. And, and, and obviously, since you're in my coaching group so we can talk one-on-one -on -one together even even you know further with this um, okay to to 
map this out, try to put it on a spreadsheet or something and make sure we're really, really in tune and line with it. But I, I do believe this can work. Just got to stick to it and um, get those questions answered. I, w I would want to bring the line of credit to zero before starting it. I would like to make sure I have all the cash right now to be able to make that you know, initial fund and then um, start creating that monthly add-in, monthly borrow, monthly add-in, monthly borrow. It's velocity banking, right? With, gotcha. with, a, with the yeah, with the policy. With that line of credit. Yeah. So Caesar is asking about the 187. Um, the 187 is the PUA rider fee, right? So he's asking if I have to pay it each and every month, I add more money into the policy. The answer is yes, because all, all this is is getting split up, right? So if I, so if I paid 40000 all at once, then there would be a you would have 4K go to premium, money go to term, right? The 53201 that goes towards term. And then the difference is like 35K and some change all went into PUA cash times that number by 5%. That's your PUA fee in the, you know, each year because it's a rider. So whenever you hear the word rider, in a policy, just think fee. There's a fee uh, attached to that. That rider allows the maximization and performance for cash value to show up in your policy, you know, day one, so it can start growing. Every year, from year to year, as you continue to fund the policy, this term rider is gonna get lower and lower and eventually drop off, right? And then you'll just have your base premium and your cash. In addition, that 4K premium from year to year, every single year moving forward, once you start breaking past year two and going into year three, you're also receiving a dividend on the 4K, which is how it starts to now really pick up in terms of growth. So in the beginning of a policy, Caesar, the very first two years are the most expensive years because you have the OIT expense, you got the PUA, the premium, right? That 4K premium, pretty much all of that money goes right into the insurance company's pocket for that year and the second year. And then the third year, you start to actually see a return of premium, so a dividend, a return of premium from the 4K, and that money, that actually starts to build up more and more each and every year. And then in addition, you've got this 36,000 sitting in cash value growing each and every year as well. So notice how, you know, the first year I put in 28, but damn, I only got like, you know, between these two numbers to, to work with. So, as long as we design a policy properly in terms of that split of what goes towards premium, what goes towards cash, we should be able to break even on a policy within the first four, five, six, seventh year being the latest, I think fourth year being the earliest, fourth, fifth year. And then from there, it's just smooth sailing. You know, now you're, now you're actually getting a positive return on the money in the beginning years we're using the money to basically you know add more cash use it to fund the business uh, once we 10x we dump money in and then we would borrow out to eliminate these debts to create cash flow have it sit in there and then keep adding more money and just keep going with the policy Awesome. So in the event, um, let's say, I think you said at the beginning that the max I could put in this would be like 60000 No, no, no. That's your mech. Okay. That's your mech limit. 
you set the premium for four thousand. Okay. So you can only put in ten x the base premium of of any properly designed policy. That MEC limit sixty thousand seven hundred is allowing an individual to put forty thousand over the course of a much longer period of time. Say you know fourteen years or twenty one years or whatever the case is. It's allowing you to fund for a much longer period of time. So like, for example, if we did a 40K with 4K premium and set the mech at 41,000, then you would only be able to pay into that for a, a certain period of time of at 40K without creating a mech. So that's why we create more space so that we don't create a mech. We don't want to mech out. Very important. Okay. Yep, I'm good. I'm going to deposit every, first zero out the line of credit, then deposit everything into the policy, then make my expenses withdrawal in advance every month from Guardian. Awesome. And, uh, oh, definitely have to, I guess, get my feel on depositing the check to start this off. Wonderful. Great. Well, this was a this was a good, you know, nice <laughs> session here. Didn't expect it to go this long, but I know this will be valuable for other people that catch the yeah. replay. And then once I edit it, that'll be a lot better. So, well, that's great. That was good. Um, I'll definitely be in touch. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the rest of your evening. You and too. I'm going to say goodnight to everyone else as well. So, awesome. Talk to you soon. All right, so hope that was real helpful to you guys. You know, we were just, that that's a new strategy. I haven't practiced that myself personally. I believe it can work. I, you know, I wanna kind of show the longevity of that and showing why that, why would someone do this instead of just paying off their debt? And you know, that does, Pose some arguments to be made, some questions to be asked, but it really, it really boils down to the capacity of the individual. Can they handle having debt sitting outside while creating this tax-free asset with the intention of 10xing my income, going from 3,000 to 30,000 a month, and then just solving all my problems on the back end? Am I willing to make that bet? If you're willing to make that bet, something like this would be really cool for you to try, especially if you get approved to do such a thing. Usually the insurance companies don't, wouldn't approve that because they base it off your age, health, and finances. So if they don't think that you can come up with 40,000, they're not gonna approve you. But if you do get approved for that, then there's an argument to be made. And it's like, wow, you know, I have the ability to pretty much get all of my income and circulate it into this tax-free bank and then borrow from it. And it's gonna, it's gonna function like a checking account. Once a month I take money out, once a month I put money in. I put more in than what I take out. As long as I do that, I'll always have cash value readily, readily available each and every month for me to pull from. And then when I approach the anniversary date each and every month, all I gotta do is come up with an extra three, 400 bucks to, to make it 4,000, right? So, I, so that one month, I handle that base premium to keep the policy in force. So that's pretty cool. Other than that, I think we did a good job. This is a pretty long video. This was great. Hope you guys have a wonderful night. God bless you guys. Enjoy the rest of your evening.